Hey guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here, and today in this video, first one of 2022, we're going to be looking at a comment that I see reoccurring on our videos pretty much all the time, and that's NHL players use the best equipment that you can get. So if we say one product is better than another or one brand is currently better than another, why is it that you see the complete opposite in the NHL? If 70% of players are using this particular brand and we say right now it's the best, how come that doesn't correlate? And that's exactly what we're going to be looking at in this video. And as a quick side note, before we jump into this video, the vast majority of you that watch our videos and always come back to see the new content aren't actually subscribed. So please consider subscribing because it really does help the channel grow and it helps to sustain us so we can create these videos that you're seeing. And on top of that, before we jump in, if you don't mind, please consider giving the video a thumbs up because it really does help us out. It brings more visibility to the channel and also this video. It helps out that very complicated YouTube algorithm. So before we jump in, thumbs up. Now, when you look at what NHL players are using and why, you can essentially split that into categories. You guys know how much I love categories. Now, with this one, the first one is going to be endorsement deals, sponsorships, powered by. That's going to be the first one. From there, the second one is going to be equipment masking. And the third one is going to be how specific hockey players are. So, in other words, preference or player preference. Now, when we're looking at the first point, which is endorsement deals and sponsorships, this isn't something that's new to us. It's not something that's a secret. Top tier NHL players or quite a few NHL players are sponsored by certain brands or endorsed by certain brands, which means they're contracted and obligated to use certain products from certain manufacturers. So for example, if a particular player is signed with brand A, you're never gonna see that player using anything other than brand A. Now, of course, this isn't something that's alien to us. We know this, it happens in pretty much all professional sports across the board. From there, we're gonna be looking at the next point, which is equipment masking, which is something that I'm not sure everyone is aware of. Now, it's not necessarily one brand that makes equipment in hockey that's guilty of this. It's pretty much the majority of them that are. Of course, we're not gonna be mentioning any names in this video because we don't wanna throw ourselves in hot water. But like I said, it's not one brand that does this. Pretty much all of them do this. Now, what I mean by this is because you see an NHL player using a family of sticks or a brand of sticks that you think that you know and you're familiar with, Underneath the graphics and the skin of that particular stick, or even in some cases the skates, that's not what that product may be. Now, of course, this doesn't happen with every single player that's powered by all of the different brands that are out there, but it is something that we have seen and is incredibly surprising. Uh, I'll give you an example. When we were taking a look at a top tier NHL player sticks before they were being shipped out to that specific player, of course, no names. When we picked up the stick, it was a stick family that we were familiar with. It was a model and brand that we were familiar with, but from a distance and, and looking at the graphics on the stick, it looked like what we thought it was. But when we picked it up, I couldn't even tell you what that stick was made from. It didn't seem like it was the same materials that we're used to seeing in retail stores. And I'm not talking about retail stock versus pro stock. This was something completely different. Certain players, certain pro players across all of the leagues across the world, the major leagues, have access to equipment customizing in, on such a level that we don't even have any idea of what they're making. The reason for that, of course, is because if this was made public and the materials and uh, construction of what this particular player liked and was using was made public, any other manufacturer could essentially replicate that, perhaps maybe offer them a better deal, and that player's now gone. So it's why these are essentially close guarded secrets. But it's something that does happen across the board with the majority of all of the manufacturers that you see that take part in having their products visible in the NHL. Now from there, the last part is going to be how specific players are, player preference, which you can break down into a further three categories. You guys, again, you know how much I love doing this. Number one would be the type of player that is happy to use pretty much anything. They can adapt pretty quickly. They're willing to take the risk of trying something they've never tried before to see if it affects their performance on the ice, if they're better, if they're worse, more than happy to try. Number two would be the type of player that never changes anything. This might be the type of player that has been in a specific brand from when they stepped onto the ice, and it's gonna be the same brand that they use until they stop playing. I've met a couple of NHL players that fit this profile perfectly. The third one and final one is gonna be the player that's a little more apprehensive, but if push comes to shove, if they absolutely need to, then they'll migrate and try something new. While you're watching this, I think it'll be pretty funny if you comment down below and let me know which player profile you fit into. Is it number one, number two, or number three? Comment down below and let me know. 
The way that you need to think about it is, of course, hockey is just as much a mental game as it is a physical game. And what I mean by that is a player needs to be completely certain, completely comfortable. They need to completely understand how their equipment is going to perform and react in different scenarios. They don't want to be on the ice thinking about what they have on. They just want to be able to focus on what they're doing on the ice, what their job is. This is one of the reasons why players can be very specific about the types of equipment that they use. And of course, let's not forget, quite a few players are also very superstitious and this is a completely other avenue that we could go down. But players having confidence and knowing how their equipment is going to react and perform on the ice is one of the main reasons that, that it's going to be very difficult to move players from one brand to another or from an older product to a newer product. It's why we sometimes see players using, for example, newer skates, but when they're on the ice and the holder that they have on might be from a manufacturer that doesn't even make them anymore. It's why even I remember a story of an NHL player that liked a particular type of skate and that skate was no longer going to be in production. So they went out and bought every single pair of their skates that they could get their hands on. They essentially bought out the entire factory to make sure that they could use those skates for as long as they possibly could. This is a perfect example of what I'm trying to explain right here. And on top of that, one thing that we need to remember is just because a product is newer, it doesn't mean by any means that it is going to be a better option for everyone. Although a product can be much more technologically advanced, like some of the skates I've got behind me over there, if you compare them to the older versions or the predecessors, they have way more features, they're stiffer, they're more responsive, they're lighter, you can switch out the blade quicker, the tongues are more comfortable, there are so many benefits. But this doesn't mean that you know, psychologically, that's going to be a better choice for a specific type of player. If they're performing and they're doing well in what they have and what they're used to, why would they want to change and risk everything? At the end of the day, it's the NHL, it's the show. Players don't want to be experimenting with their equipment. If it's working, that's what they're going to stick to. And it's one of the reasons why referencing the NHL as a point of reference for what is the best equipment in hockey isn't really the best way to do it because there's a lot of factors that influence why NHL players are using the equipment that they are using at the time that you see them using it. And on top of this, another point we need to remember is that all of these big manufacturers that are out there and not making top spec equipment and all of the different ranges and fit families and options that they have with all of their equipment lines to sell to NHL players. In terms of keeping companies alive, keeping their revenue growing, keeping money coming in so they can develop more products, that comes down to the masses, which is us. In other words, the recreational players, the beer league players, the semi-pros and all of the other leagues that are out there, we're the ones that are the mass buyers of this equipment. Of course, the NHL is the reason that they're going to be pushing development to make the products lighter, more responsive, more features, to make the jobs of the NHL players and also their equipment managers easier. At the end of the day, manufacturers are going to be trying to develop the game to make it faster, quicker, more exhilarating, and the equipment needs to grow with that. But at the same time as saying that, it's also important to note that the equipment that they make in all of these different ranges and variations is for us. So in terms of trying to figure out where the best place to look for the best equipment to see what's current, what's doing really well, it's going to be our channel with the videos that we produce. Joking, not joking, but another place that you could look is the leagues below the NHL. The semi-pro leagues, the pro leagues, even the junior leagues. That's where you're going to be seeing people really experimenting with equipment. Some players, if you remember what we said about the different player profiles, these are the best places to look to see what equipment people are really being drawn to. Another really good example of this is we could reference Mars Blade's brand new holder, which on paper and in when you look at it from a practical perspective, makes a lot of sense versus a traditional hockey holder that we see on all of the skates that we have now. They're fixed, although they have the ability to switch out the blades quicker. None of them have the technology or the flow motion technology that's incorporated into Mars Blade's holders. Now, when you look at it on paper, it makes sense. It's, it has way more benefits, you could say arguably, than a traditional blade holder that you see on the skates that we are using to date. So why aren't all the NHL players using it? There's a few NHL players that are, but why don't all of them use it? It comes down to how specific is that player with their equipment? Is there an endorsement deal or a sponsorship or something behind the reason that they're using it? And of course, like I said, new technology isn't something that is always adopted by NHL players immediately. Although it might be newer, it might be technologically advanced, it doesn't mean that they're going to jump on it straight away. It needs to be tried, tested, they need to be comfortable with it, they need to have that reassurance that they've got versus what they're using now to be able to then migrate over to this new tech. So it's why looking at the NHL to see what is new, what is popping, what is current, what is the best isn't always as easy as it seems and it's not always an accurate gauge for what's happening. 
A reference that I could give you is think about it from a meal perspective. I like to have a Michelin star meal that has a bunch of different ingredients that I can't even pronounce half of the names of. It's presented in a very flamboyant way. But then when you look at that versus a standard meal like chicken and chips or chicken and potatoes from somewhere like Nando's. And if you're outside of the UK, it's a Portuguese chicken restaurant that's pretty mainstream that you find everywhere. It's a chain. Now, so you've got this chicken and chips or chicken and rice meal versus a Michelin star meal. Is the Michelin star meal more complex? Is there more ingredients? Is it more advanced? Did it take longer to prepare? Yes. Is it the best option? That depends on the person. Some people would just prefer the much more standard meal as opposed to the very complex fancy meal. This is the same way that you could think about the equipment. More advanced, more tech, better doesn't always mean better for everybody. As always guys, a big thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you've got any questions about anything that I've discussed in the video, please leave them down below. Let me know if you agree with what I've said or you disagree with what I've said. This is a comment that I'm constantly seeing coming up in terms of if you say this is the best, why aren't all the NHL players using it? So I thought I'd reference this point or this comment and address it in a video instead of having to reply the same reply to about a thousand different comments saying basically the exact same thing. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Make sure you thumbs up before you go. Consider subscribing to the channel to help us out and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care guys.